So, first of all, before we have to take the emotion out of it, and we have to recognize and say, number one, there is no such thing as gay marriage. That is a cultural invention. Prior to 1900, states and governments did not issue marriage licenses. The church did. The state got involved because of census and tax purposes and created a recognition of unions as contracts, not covenants. So today, um, you know, we, the state is very much involved in it, but historically, for, um, for thousands of years, it was considered a sacred, sacredly defined union. There were common law marriages that you know, everybody else recognized, but it was always conducted by the church because it was viewed as a religious institution. And uh, it's only recently that the idea of three people getting married, now, now some states are issuing uh, multiple marriage, polyamory, three people can get married. There was an example of somebody marrying themselves. Uh, Listen, that's Makes not marriage. Arguments like a lot easier, actually. And so you may have, <laughs> you may have a relationship with a person of the same sex, and the state might recognize that as marriage, but God does not recognize that as marriage. Marriage is between a man and a woman, biological male, biological woman, in the sight of God. It is sacred. It is. It used to be called holy matrimony because it is a covenantal union. Now, the state may have a relationship that they view as a contract, but that's not the same. The second thing is this. What happens when you go to a wedding? The reason why you are invited to a wedding is you are, invi you are invited to a wedding to celebrate the joining of two people together and to serve as a witness that affirms that you support them and that you will uphold the vows that they are making at that celebration and ceremony. And so I, as a Christian, cannot in good conscience go to a gay marriage or a marriage of two people of the same gender. And here's why. Because I do not affirm the union that they are entering into. I cannot support the vows that they are making to one another because they're outside of the bonds of, of God's purposes. Now, I can love the individual. I can, I can love them as a person, even if we disagree. And my hope would be is that the person who is uh, the person in my world that is getting married or is entering into this con contracted relationship or this union would also recognize that as a Christian, they're putting me in a very difficult position of choosing between loving them and violating my own conscience. Now, Beckett Cook, who was here with us a couple years ago, uh, said this, and I, it stood out to me. He said, I am so grateful that when I came out to my parents, because he lived in, the, uh, he lived in uh, a, a gay relationship for multiple years. He said, I'm so grateful that when I came out to my family, they did not change their theology to, to suit me. He said, because a lot of parents do that, where they're like, well, my, my kid is gay, he's come out, and I love my kids, so I, I don't wanna lose my kid, and so I've gotta change my relation, I've gotta change my view of scripture. God must be okay with it because of the relationship. And he said, I'm so grateful that they didn't. He said, because years later, when I, am, when I encounter the Lord in a church service at the lowest point in my life, if my parents had changed their theology, I would have had nobody to go to and ask for help. I would not have been able to call my parents and say, God's doing something in my life. Because they would have changed their view. And I would have, he said, I would have, he said, I might have said it in the, in the short term, you know, that I love my parents, they're so loving and inclusive and accepting. He said, but in my mind, I would not have respected them because I would have known that they're compromising their belief system because of me. And I think it's important that we understand that Jesus said, everybody thinks I came to bring peace. He said, but I came to bring a, a sword. I, and the sword is a point of division. He says, I've come, and he said, if you love your mother or your father, your son or your daughter more than you love me, you're not worthy of the kingdom of God. We have to be willing in this day and age, and we're not the first Christians to do it. Christians for 2,000 years have had to do it, where we've had to draw lines 
And we've had to say, this is my conviction, no matter what, no matter what it costs me. No matter if it costs me friendships, no matter if it costs me relationships, no matter if it costs me my job, no matter if it costs me my possessions. Now, I'm not going to be mean about it. I'm not going to be condemning and judgmental about it. I'm just saying this is, this is the line that, that I stand behind. Let me quickly share this. I've, I've had two close friends who both of them have had kids that have come out as gay, and they were invited to the ceremony, and both of them uh, decided that they were gonna go. They told their kids, now, I'm not in favor of what you're doing, but I love you, and because I love you, I'm gonna come there, but I'm not walking you down the aisle. I'm just gonna be there, and you know, at their child's request. Both of them went there, and their relationship was still severed. Because they thought if I do this, then my kids are gonna feel like I'm making a concession for them. But it didn't happen that way because, well, you didn't want me down the aisle. Well, you didn't accept me. And most of the time, my experience has been the person on the other side of the argument is the one who actually severs the relationship. Very few parents or very few siblings who are Christians trying to honor Jesus have said to their sibling or to their child, how much I love you and how we might differ, but I will always love you. I will always be your parent. It's typically on the other side. So when there's this call for tolerance, it's always interesting to me that it's always a call for us to be tolerant. And if we don't, they become intolerant. And so we, we need to find a way to be loving, to be honoring, but to be truthful and to not compromise our standpoint. So that would be my position.